let's dig into how we can take our GitHub Actions workflow that we're using to build a Next.js web application and create a GitHub release and release that Next.js web application. So a couple housekeeping things we want to do first. One of our problems is that even though we create these artifacts, we want to actually have some historical reference of what the application looked at some point in time. So the easiest way to do that is create what's called GitHub releases. We can create a new release. We can give it a name, title, and a tag. And then we can attach some zip files or binaries to include as part of that release. And I want to create this automatically using GitHub Actions. The other thing I want to do is want to make sure each release has a unique number. And I can get this by looking at my GitHub Actions and see that they each have a unique number. And this is called our run number. We can use that when we create our releases to give them Again, unique numbers that correspond to the run numbers for the GitHub action. So let's try to build this out. We have our YAML file. We're going to create a new job. We're going to call this job release project. Now, the, the order doesn't matter because right now these two jobs will run simultaneously. So we'll give this a name, release next.jit, release static site to GitHub releases. We're going to run this on Ubuntu latest. But this is where it gets really interesting. While technically they run side by side, I want to make sure release project only runs after we have this artifact uploaded. So I can create a new property called needs and say we need build project to run first before this can run. So even though release project is higher up in this YAML file, it won't run until after build project is done and done successfully. So this is where we can start adding our steps. So I'll do a steps list. And the first step is pretty easy. We're going to download our site content. I'll add a little bit of extra white space to make this a little bit easier to read. Now, we know to upload our static website, we need to go actions upload artifact. So I'm willing to bet if we go to github.com slash actions, download artifact, we'll be able to find a repo with the exact opposite action. And that's download artifact. The way we do this is actions download artifact and we give it the name of the artifact we want to download. So let's see. We'll say uses actions download artifact v2 the width name and if we go down and check the name for our upload artifact is static site. And since this is a new job or um, we haven't checked out our code so there's nothing in this folder I'm okay with just downloading it to the current folder. So now I want to do something with this content. The first thing I want to do, since it's about 165 files, I don't want to upload all of them to GitHub releases. I'd rather compress it. Now, I don't know of any built-in zip or unzip action for GitHub Actions. So I will create a step called archive site content, but I need to really shop for an action that can use with this uses property. So I'm gonna go to github.com slash marketplace. And this is where we can add tools for GitHub. And we see there's apps and actions. I wanna see some actions. I'm gonna search for an action that can create a zip folder. So I'll search for zip. And the first action I see here is called zip release. Looks like that's the one we're gonna use. So how do we use it? Well, we need to use the doctor zero zip release at master and then with file name and any exclusions if we care for that. Well, I don't really need any exclusions, so I'll just keep it simple with file names. So let's see. Actions, zip release, master with file name. And I want to create a file called site.zip. So here's what I'm doing so far. Download all the site content to the current folder from the static site artifact. Then I'm creating a zip folder called site.zip with all the content from there. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create a GitHub release. So create GitHub release. And again, I want to find an action that will help us do this. So if I go to GitHub dot com slash actions organization. I see that they have lots of actions. I want to look for something that will create a release. 
So I'll search for release, and I see two of the really interested in me. One to create a release, and one to upload an asset to the release. So you know what? I'm going to check out both of these. So let's start with creating a release. I'm going to create a GitHub release. So it looks like the way we do this is we use actions create release at version one. We need to set our environment with our GitHub token, and then we can set some properties for the release. So let's give it a try. Actions create release at V1. We're going to set our environment variables. It needs a GitHub token. Now I can actually go get a GitHub token and paste it in here, but storing secrets in our YAML file is pretty dangerous practice. But if you have a GitHub action, you can assume that there's some secrets that are already there. So if we go to secrets.github token, it will actually get us our GitHub token. So we don't have to set that up. It's already there for us. Now the next thing I want to do is take this and I want to specify some properties of my release. Now the first thing is I want to specify a tag name. What tag do I want to use for this? Well, I'm going to say V and then I want to put my run number. So just like when we went and got um, the secrets context variable, we can get the GitHub context variable and get information about this GitHub run. So run number is one of the properties we can get there to get our run number. And I could do the same thing for a release name. I'm going to call this release version and then copy that same syntax. I'm doing a little string concatenation here, but it should work. The last thing I want to do is I want to upload my zip file to this GitHub release because we have to create the release first, then upload a file. So I'm going to call, do a name, upload asset to GitHub release. And I'm going to do a uses. Then I'm going to go right back into the browser, check out this upload release asset. And I see that in order to do this, we need to um, create the release, then upload release asset v1. Same thing, GitHub token, environment variable. Um, for the upload URL, we need to actually reference a previous step. Huh. And the way we do that is by giving the previous step an ID. And then we can get its outputs and upload URL. And then give it the content type, name, and path of our asset we're going to do. So... Let's give this a shot. This one's a little bit more complex, but we'll give it a shot. So we're going to use upload release asset at V1. We're going to copy our environment variable. And then we're going to start building out that width. So there's quite a few things we want to put in here. The first thing we need to put in is our upload URL. Now this one requires us to reference the previous step. And we can't do that because this previous step doesn't have an ID. So I'll add one. Create new release. Now that I've created an ID there, I can reference it in other steps. So steps dot create new release, get the output to that step. I want the upload URL for that release. So what asset do we want to upload? Well, we want to upload the site.zip file in our current folder. Now, what do we want to call this? See, we don't have to call it site.zip when we upload it. So you know what? I'm going to call it site hyphen V. 3.zip. Now this is hard coded, so every time it uploads the asset, it's gonna always call them v3. So I can use the same trick we used up here for the tag name, string concatenation, to say site v github run number dot zip. The last thing is I want to give it a content type. And this one's gonna be application zip. So let's save it. Assuming I have no typos, this should just work. So we're going to um, add release job, commit that push it from our local Git repo to our remote, which is our repo on GitHub. Go back, all the way back to our actions, for example, next web app. There's add release job. It's queuing up the job, waiting for it to get an agent to run the job. There we go, it has an agent. So notice it's running the build Next.js application job first, because we have dependencies now. So build Next.js application has to finish before it can run the next job. So our NPM dependencies are installing. After that, it's going to build the static website and upload it as an artifact. Build in static website. done. It's uploading all 165 files. Hmm. 
Hmm, that's interesting. It looks like there was an error on their side, but it had automatic retry enabled, so it doesn't impact us at all. If we go back to here, we'll see that for the build Next.js application, it's completed. So it's going to run the release static site to GitHub releases job. So set up the job is downloading the repositories for actions that we don't already have built locally. So notice it's grabbing all those actions. The ones from GitHub actions are pre-built for you, so it doesn't have to build them. But the one from the third party, it does have to build for you. So there we go. Downloading the site content from Artifact. We have 165 files. We put them all in a zip file, all 165. We created a GitHub release. And now we're uploading that zip file to GitHub releases. And we should be done. So we go to example next web app. There's release v4. There's our assets, site v4.zip. If I open it, I have my static HTML website. 